Well, tomorrow night, HBO will be premiering a new docudrama entitled Confirmation, and it is already generating some controversy. It tells the story, to some extent, of the explosive 1991 Supreme Court nomination and confirmation hearings of Clarence Thomas, where Anita Hill, a 35-year-old law professor from Oklahoma, testified that she had been sexually harassed by the nominee. At the time, the hearing stirred controversy about race, gender, and sexual harassment in the workplace. But now the movie is drawing fire from some of the folks involved in the process. Here's a clip. Watch. Why in God's name, when he left his position of power or status or authority over you, why in God's name would you ever speak to a man like that the rest of your life? That's a very good question. And I am sure that I cannot answer it to your satisfaction. That is one of the things that I have tried to do here today. This is a circus. It's a national disgrace. And from my standpoint, as a black American, as far as I'm concerned, it's a high-tech lynching for uppity blacks who in any way deign to think for themselves do for themselves to have different ideas. Wow. In moments, we will be joined by Susanna Grant, the executive producer and writer of Confirmation, and Mark Paoletta, who's a former George H.W. Bush administration lawyer who helped usher Clarence Thomas through his Supreme Court confirmation. We begin tonight with Mark. Mark, good to see you. Megan, thanks for having me. So you read the, the screenplay, the script uh, for this movie. That's right. And you didn't like it from the start. Why? It was fundamentally dishonest. What I saw was an intentional effort to leave out the, the damaging testimony that undermined Anita Hill's his, um, uh, testimony. Like what? Can you remember anything, for example? Sure. It, w one of the things that the American people remember that she went from one job to another. She, she claimed that she was harassed at the Department of Education. By Clarence Thomas. By Clarence Thomas, and that she moved to the EEOC with Clarence Thomas. Who does that, right? But, and that's in the movie, okay? But it's for three explanations of why she went with him that were fundamentally false and were proven false during the hearings. That's what the American people saw. That's why they, they determined at the end of those hearings they trusted Clarence Thomas and believed him two to one. Do you think she made the whole thing up? Uh, I do believe she made the whole thing up. I think she got caught in a lie that she had, um, and, 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 and some of her witnesses, the timetables didn't match up, but I do believe she, she told a lie. Why would she, she lie she about down. it? I think she had, she had left her old law firm and she told some friends that she had been sexually harassed. By somebody other than Thomas? By somebody, yeah, at the law firm. And, and it happened long before she ever worked for Clarence Thomas. And so, but what, you think she wanted attention? What do you think she, I mean? I think she got caught in a lie and she doubled down and went forward with this lie. And, and again, the, the movie shows her, uh, when, the, when the Senate committee uh, contacts her, immediately cooperating. Anita Hill tried to take down Clarence Thomas with an anonymous uh, complaint um, without the, and her, 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 um, her demand was that Thomas not know her name. Mm -hmm. But do you think that could be because she was his victim and she didn't want to face him? I mean, that, that's another explanation. I think that. she was trying to manipulate the process to take him down without ever having to come forward. How do you think that the, these hearings, I mean, because the nation was captivated by these hearings at the yeah. time. Joe Biden, uh, Arlen Specter, played a huge role in this. Right. And they were not exactly on Ms. Hill's side. Uh, well, I think Joe Biden was very much on... Sorry, on, just Arlen Specter was not on her side at all. Right, well, he was asking fair questions as to how her, her story added up. Mm -hmm. And so do you think... What's your problem with the movie? What, I mean, other than in, not including all the things that may diminish uh, her credibility. Right. Well, again, I think they it's get an wrong. effort to rewrite the, the history to show that Anita Hill was more credible than she was. Because why? Why would they do that? To, 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 to make it like she was telling the truth and Clarence Thomas was lying. Mm -hmm. All right, stand by, because we have Susanna Grant with us, too. She's the executive producer and writer of Confirmation. Susanna, your thoughts on, on Mark's charge there? Um, I, I first want to tell you that I reached out to Mark Paoletta while I was working on this script a few times, and I would have welcomed his input. I reached out to as many people as I possibly could who were involved in the hearings. Um, affiliated with both of the parties and I wanted my intention all along was to get this as um, truthful and accurate mm -hmm. as possible I really would have welcomed his input do then. you 
Um, I will say, ahead. look, I'm not in the business of defending Anita Hill. She can do that herself. But I will say that there's a tremendous amount of independent documentation of these, these hearings done by very experienced journalists. And you'll find that the um, points that Mr. Paoletta brings up just, just don't past muster when you really dig into the facts. Do you feel like you have an opinion, having written the script and, and made the movie, do you have an opinion about whether Anita Hill was telling the truth? You know, uh, Megan, what I figured out at the absolute outset of this was that there are only two people who know what happened between those two people. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, who knows if, if they're really even clear on it. So I went into this with the clear understanding that I could never answer that question. Mm -hmm. That wasn't what was interesting to me. I don't think that's what's most interesting about these hearings. What I think is interesting about these hearings is that they were a watershed event in our collective cultural history. They completely changed how we perceive and talk about women's rights in the workplace. It was, the, it was one and, of the first and I times think we the publicly heard about sexual harassment in the workplace. This is 1991. It wasn't, it's not that it hadn't been happening. It's that this, is, this shined a big spotlight on it. Whether it happened in this case is a different question, but this did shine a big problem, uh, spotlight on that issue. Absolutely. And the reason it was as explosive and the reason it captivated everyone's attention so much was because it was sort of this unnamed unease within um, so many women's experiences, this unfairness in their workplace. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing that I really like about it, there's sort of an un, um, uncredited character in the movie, and that is the American citizenry. Um, we have a lot of scenes where the phones in the senator's offices start ringing off the hook, and it's the American people demanding that their representatives follow through on this. They were not going to reconvene the hearings until the American people called up and said, no, this is something we really want to pay attention to. I insist that you, as my representative, pay attention to this. Mm -hmm. And, yet, and, but, and they but, did. But and extent, I get very inspired by that. Question for you. But to what extent was this, you know, because people believe that after Robert Bork was defeated, uh, and that was the first time that this process was turned really political. It used to be if you were a qualified judge, a good judge, you, you got on the bench. Scalia got on there 98 to 0, uh, even though they knew he was a conservative. His judicial philosophy wasn't a secret. And then with Rob, Robert Bork, it mm -hmm. started to change, and the Republicans felt this is an, a continuation of that. They were doing it now to another nominee. Is that political angle well covered? I, I hope so. It's certainly, we, as, I hope you'll see the movie and you'll see that that is actually how we start the movie with the complete politicization of the confirmation process. And, and obviously that was a huge factor in this, mm -hmm. uh, in the whole process. And they, fe they felt that And I'm very interested in the, the clash of the profoundly political and intensely personal uh -huh. um, that this dramatized. Well, I mean, the acting looks spectacular. I mean, just that, the clip alone is very intriguing. Susanna, thank you very much. Mark, you're still here. Did you want to say something? Sure. I, I find it interesting that, in a, you know, a couple years later, uh, Anita Hill goes on television and defends Bill Clinton against sexual harassment and sexual assault charges uh, in 1998. Mm-hmm. Fascinating. I think we've piqued the audience's curiosity. Thank you for being here, Mark and Susanna. Thanks, Thanks for having me.